Greetings and welcome to my new calculus site. My name is John Gabriel. I'm doing a special presentation for a young friend who's asked me about the topic. So without further ado, let me begin. Now, this uh, young person wanted to know about a refresher course on logarithms. So um, in order to understand what kind of a function is a logarithmic function, we, we start off with an exponential function. So for example, there's an exponential function here, y is equal to a superscript x, okay, or a to the x. And we can get an idea of what this function looks like by plotting the whole numbers of x and uh, seeing the corresponding ax. Okay, so uh, let the base a equal to 2 for the following example. So we'll just use whole numbers of x, minus 1, etc., 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we find out that if we put uh, 2 to the minus 1, it's a half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, and so on. And if we plot these points and join them, then we have <coughs> the exponential graph, excuse me, which you see here. Okay? And so the logarithmic function is simply switching the coordinates of the points from the previous table. So since we usually state y in terms of x, we write y is equal to log of x to base a, and not x is equal to log of y to base a. So the graph is shown below. It's a little confusing the way this is done, but that's the tradition or the custom. Um, the graph is shown below and it illustrates how the points are swapped. So here you've got these points going on to the logarithmic function. Okay, so they're both symmetrical about the y-axis and it might not seem like that's the case because I've rescaled my x-axis to make this a little easier to understand. So to be symmetrical means to be equidistant from any same point on y equals x, which is the line of symmetry. So when I was at school, we had no calculators, and in order to perform long ca calculations with decimals, we used logarithmic and trigonometric tables. And in fact, before we used these tables, we had slide rules. <laughs> so slide rules were a little more complicated, in my opinion. But uh, in fact, there weren't even calculators available when I finished high school. So um, the logarithmic tables consisted of two parts, which we refer to as the logarithms and their anti-logarithms. That's just uh, speak for uh, taking it back to decimals. So for example, uh, if we had the term 10 to the 3, we call 3 the logarithm and 10 to the 3 or 1000 the anti-logarithm, which is just going back the other way. So now let's say we wanted to multiply this number by this number. Now that can take a very long time and it could be very error prone if we're doing it manually. So we first look up the logarithms for each of these two numbers, and they are these numbers respectively, okay? And then we can say that in order to multiply them, it's this uh, term multiplied by this term. Now this becomes very easy because all we have to do now, instead of multiplying these two big numbers, we just add the exponents, and we have a new logarithm, 8.627, right? And we know from the property of logarithms that, a, that x to the a times x to the b is the same as x to the a plus b. So to convert this back to a decimal, we look this up in the anti-logarithm tables to see that it results in this big number. Okay, So that is, multiplication has been done. And we would do division in exactly the same way. Okay, So label, for example, if we were working with moles and Avogadro's number in physics, and science, we would use logarithm tables. So it takes a short lesson learning how to use the tables. So uh, this logarithm here, for example, we call 8 the characteristic, which is the same as the integer part or the part that appears before the radix, this part here, 8, and the 6 to 7, which is the mantissa, the fractional part, okay, appearing after the radix. So if the characteristic were negative, then we would place a vinculum above it. So uh, this would be called bar 1, and it would mean that once we convert uh, using the anti-log tables, we need to shift the decimal place uh, 1 to the left, or if it was bar 2, then 2 to the left, and so on. So for example, the logarithm of 1 over 20 in base 10 is equal to minus 
0.0301 because 1 over 20 is equal to 10 to the power of minus 1.301. So, but we write this as 10 to the power of bar 1.301 and then look up only 0 0.301 in the tables to get 5 and then fix the decimal using the characteristic bar 1 which means 0 0.05. Okay, so now I don't remember, I've done this all out of my head, and it's been over 40 years ago, actually over, probably closer to over 45 years ago, um, in fact closer to 50. So I don't know if I've listed it correctly, but every logarithm table uh, has its own little peculiarities, so you'd have to read how they tell you to use it at the beginning of the, of the book, okay. Now, in my opinion, you shouldn't waste time on this because uh, if you've done a course at university, you can actually construct your own tables, especially now that you have uh, uh, computers and you can program them to find these, to find these uh, values very fast and accurately. Um, but of course, even that is not necessary. So I, at the age of 14, had already taught myself calculus uh, I knew much more than any professor I'd ever met. <clears throat> and uh, if I didn't have cal uh, computers or, and calculators back then, I did it by hand. It would have taken me an awful long time to create these tables. And of course, you know, being human, arithmetic is very error prone. So several years later, after I left school, we saw the first IBM PC, I think. That was in around 1980. I'm not sure. Uh, memory is very foggy, but it was then that I taught myself to develop software in several languages and that eventually became uh, my main vocation for the next 26 years or so, 24 to 26 years. So a reasonably simple introduction to logarithms and their history is given here in this link by Tariq Said. So you could search for it on Google, the history of the natural logarithm, how it was discovered. And it's pretty interesting and neat. So this is dedicated to my young friend who's uh, gone back to school, I think. And I hope it will give you a, a better understanding and a bit of guidance. So if you're not already subscribed to my new calculus channel, become a subscriber, tell your friends about it, and uh, donate money on my uh, Odyssey channel to which I'll place a link. In the details section, either your choice of currency or credits, that will serve me just fine. So, I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.